Houses of worship are by nature places of a community's memory. First and foremost, they embody the moment in time when they were built. For the Fish Church, that moment was the midpoint of a century that produced two devastating wars and launched a nuclear era. It was a moment to rethink religious expression. It is not difficult to sense this age of anxiety in First Presbyterian's asymmetrical, angular modernism. Houses of worship also have a longer tradition as places where evidence of sacred and secular community memories are displayed. First Presbyterian is part of that tradition, even though its modern sanctuary and grounds were not planned with those specific things in mind. Let's start with the sanctuary, where architect Wallace Harrison captured the memory of the medieval Gothic cathedral, a singular, perhaps greatest achievement of Christian architecture, abstracted in the building's entrance portal, construction, and of course, its magnificent stained glass. The pavement, as you approach the sanctuary, remembers people important to the growth and reformation of Christian thought over time. With embedded granite tablets carved with their names and accomplishments, ranging from the significant figures of the Hebrew Bible to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Inside, on the wall, as you approach the chapel, are building stones collected during World War II. There are 111 stones from 37 countries, marking geographic locations and institutions with specific links to Christianity. But not all of these memories are strictly religious. Inside the sanctuary, at the foot of the communion table, is a granite gristmill stone embedded in the floor. It is both an artifact of the technology that produced the first daily bread and of Stamford's origin as an agricultural community. Now outside, along Bedford Street in a field stone wall reminiscent of New England's beginnings, the major social, political, and cultural events of the first three centuries of Stamford's European settlement are carved in stone in granite tablets, arranged in chronological order from left to right. The catalyst behind the incised stone memorials and historic artifacts was Reverend George Stewart, the pastor from 1928 to 1944. Last but not least, the architectural team and congregation found a way to remember the downtown church the new campus replaced. Arranged sparingly along the glass-walled corridor connecting classrooms and offices are pieces of the stained glass from the earlier church. And the architects incorporated stone blocks locally quarried from nearby Clarks Hill, salvaged from the exterior walls of the earlier church in the piers and walls of the new hallways and chapel a gesture of remembrance that was also prescient as a sustainable building practice in its day. We hope that you have a better appreciation of how this modern Gothic church has embraced both the old and the new.